Now I'm going to begin by showing you two different um, examples of curved mirrors. So what you see in this uh, picture over here, does anyone know what that is? It's a, it's a concave mirror which serves to focus the sun's rays on this point over here. In fact, because it's spherical and not parabolic, it actually focuses the sun's rays on a line over there. And um, if you have a water that circulates through there, the water that circulates can um, get heated up so much that it boils and becomes steam. That steam is then cycled through pipes to a kitchen. So this is um, from the town where my parents live in India. They have this this uh, huge bowl on top of uh, a community kitchen which can, it serves meals twice a day and it feeds about a thousand people at each meal. Okay, so this is one example of how you can use mirrors um, for, as an alternative source of energy. Um, because energy in the US is so cheap, even though this act technology actually originated here, it's not used into many places over here. So we want to try and understand how this happens, and that's what uh, I'm going to do today. Okay, so the idea of a spherical mirror is that it's a, it's a polished surface that reflects light. Um, and aside, you know, we already talked about plane mirrors. Plane mirrors will reflect rays such that the object distance and the image distance are exactly the same. But in a curved mirror, you get a slightly different effect. So if I hold this one up, can you all see yourselves in it? And what kind of image do you see of yourself? So what kind of mirror is this? Anybody? Who said that? Yes, louder. Convex. Why? Well, of course, it looks convex too. <laughs> but it's also, it's, um, you can see that the image that's formed is smaller than you, right? Do you see that you're reduced in size somewhat? So any, do you know any place such mirrors are used? <laughs> You'll find yourself on screen, I think. Uh, sorry? Security cameras usually are, well, maybe, yes, sometimes they will use, but uh, um, they use lenses probably rather than mirrors. But uh, you do have security mirrors in places that where you can see a larger area in a small space, yes? Correctly, uh, correct. I mean, when you're at an intersection where it could be that you can't see traffic from another direction, often you'll have a mirror like this. So you can say there's a very sharp bend in the road, then you can see any traffic that's coming around at you, which you may not be able to see with your uh, naked eye. Um, other places such mirrors are used? Yes? Yes, so the side view mirrors on cars are... Um, convex mirrors. This, on the other hand, is a concave mirror. Now tell me what you see in this. And what you guys see may be different from what you see. So what do both of you see? You're upside down? And now? <laughs> <laughs> no, just tell, tell me what you're seeing. Is it too bright? What do you see? It's too bright? It's focusing the light on you, right? What do all of you see when you look in this? Upside down. However, I'm going to hold it so that it's not. Uh, what do you see now? You see yourself upside down? 
So tell me what you're seeing. You're seeing yourself right side up and you look weird. <laughs> but also you look larger than, right, than normal. Okay, so this is a concave mirror in which you can get both real images and virtual images. And I'm um, going to show you examples of how that happens today. Okay. All right. So in a con, um, concave mirror, what you've done is taken the, you know, silvered this side of the surface so that the reflective side is curved inwards. What's happening there is light rays that hit the surface of this tend to get focused inwards. So if I were to draw a line that bisects the mirror and is perpendicular to it at its center point, that line is called the principal axis. So the principal axis is a line perpendicular to the center of the mirror okay, and bisecting it. Okay, so any ray that hits the mirror is going to bounce off the mirror and move towards the principal axis. Okay, so for example, if I were to look at this one, um, I have a parallel ray coming and it's moving towards the principal axis. What is the law or behavior it's uh, um, obeying at the surface of the mirror? It's the same law of reflection that we learned. That is to say, the incident angle is equal to the reflected angle. How are the incident and reflected angle measured is if I were to take the point where the light ray hits the mirror, draw a tangent to the surface of the mirror at that point, and draw the line perpendicular to that tangent. So if I look at this line over here, remember that the, if I have a circle, if I connect any point to the circle to its center, that line, the radius in other words, is perpendicular to a tangent drawn at that point of the circle. So you understand what I'm saying is, if I have a circle, and here's the center of my circle, if I take any point on the rim and connect it to the center, this line is perpendicular to the tangent drawn to the circle at that point, right? So the normal, okay, where the ray is obeying the law of reflection, remember incident angle and reflected angle are measured relative to the normal. The normal is the line that connects that point of the mirror to the center of the mirror. So the center of the mirror is called C here. It's called the center of curvature. The distance from that point to that is basically the radius of the circle that the mirror is part of. And that's called the radius of curvature of the mirror. Okay, so that, that's the R. If I were to then work out mathematically, which I'm not going to go into, I'm just going to tell you the result. If I have a ray that's parallel to the principal axis, hitting the mirror at any point, the way it reflects is to go through a point that's exactly halfway between the center of the mirror and the center of curvature. That point is called the focal point. So the focal length of a mirror is the distance from the surface of the mirror to this point F, the focal point, and that distance is exactly half the radius of curvature of the mirror. Okay. So what you have is the focal length is half the radius. Everyone clear? This is true regardless of whether it's a concave or a convex mirror, yes. The distance from C to B is also equal to the radius because B is a point on the surface of the mirror, so any point connecting the surface of the mirror to C is going to be radius R. Okay, so this is going to be true regardless of what ray hits, it's going to bounce off the mirror and reflect towards the center. Now we are going to use the approximation that all parallel rays hitting the mirror will go through the focal point, yes. Um, so 
the normal is the point connecting this point on the mirror with the center of curvature. That's where the light ray is hitting the mirror. Okay. I'm looking at a particular light ray. I can look at any other light ray too, but then I would look at where it hits the mirror and connect that point to the center of curvature. But having said that, you're never going to have to do that again because I'm going to tell you some rules for how you will draw ray diagrams. Those rules are to make life simpler for you. It doesn't mean those are the only rays coming from the object, right? There are many light rays coming from the object. They are all focusing in. But we are going to focus on just a few of them. Okay, so this is just to tell you that it's not necessarily so that every light ray that hits the mirror parallel goes through the focal point. You know, if the mirror is perfectly spherical, they actually go through other points as well. But we are going to sweep this under the rug, okay? We are going to ignore this. This is called spherical aberration. We are going to ignore spherical aberration. We are going to assume every light ray that hits the mirror parallel to the principal axis goes through the focal point, okay? So having shown you this, ignore it. With a convex mirror, what you've done is you've silvered the inner surface so that light reflects off the outer surface of this sphere. So basically, I've taken a chunk of a sphere. I can either polish the inner end or uh, inner surface or the outer surface. Now, if the outer surface is reflective and facing, you know, the light source, um, what's going to happen is using that same law of reflection that when light rays hit the mirror, they will bounce off in a direction that's going away. Because if I were to draw the normal at this point, where should I draw the normal now? Um, well, the center of, so the light, the mirror is like this, the light is coming from this side. The center of the circle is now on the other side. So you draw the center of curvature on the other side. Imagine this mirror is part of a big circle. And so the normal would be the point connecting this to this. Um, and so if I were to draw the normal again, the, I would use this to uh, derive where that light ray goes, again using the law of reflection. And once again, I'd find that a parallel ray appears to go such that it goes through a focal point, but a focal point on the other side of the mirror. That focal point is once again halfway between the surface of the mirror and the center of curvature. Okay? So it's exactly symmetrical.